Hello and happy Thursday. Welcome once again to another iHomeschool Hangout. You'll find us here each and every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 Mountain, no, Mountain Time, and 11 a.m. for my folks on the Pacific Coast. You can circle us here on Google Plus um, to follow along with the homeschool bloggers of IHN. You can also follow us on iTunes and on Stitcher and over on YouTube. We will discuss family management topics as well as homeschool topics and today we are thrilled to be talking about teaching art in your homeschool. This is a topic that um, scares some moms like me that uh, don't have any artistic talent but we have an amazing panel of people as well as a featured guest from See the Light that we're going to be sharing some great tips about why art is important in your homeschool, how you can teach it, some resources, and just all kinds of great stuff. Um, before we get started, I just want to talk about See the Light just a tiny bit. Um, See the Light encourages children to draw and create their own masterpieces depicting God's grace and provision. They offer nine volumes of art lessons on DVD. And for high school students, they also have DVD art project courses. They also have some online, I'm sorry, some hands-on art lessons that revolve around Bible stories. You can start checking them out over at seethelightshine.com. And we're also going to talk about some resources, and we have a, we have a representative from, from their company as well here with us today. So let's get started. I'm going to have my panelists that I'm super excited about introduce each other. I'm sorry, introduce themselves, and then we will take questions from the event page as we have time, and hopefully this will be a wonderful resource for you guys. James, you want to kick us off? Sure. I'm uh, James Pence. I'm with See the Light, and uh, I'm excited to be here. I've been uh, drawing well, most of my life. Uh, I found See the Light because... Uh, I Actually, they found me. I'm uh, a gospel chalk artist, among other things, and uh, we came together several years ago, and uh, just a real joy to be able to represent them and uh, uh, help kids get excited about drawing and art. Excellent. I look forward to learning some stuff from you today. If you can look back in the background, James has um, some chalk art back in the back that I'm, I'm enjoying looking at. What about you, you Janine? Hi, I'm Janine. Um, I vlog at True Aim, and I'm a mom of four, and I usually talk about family and homeschooling and also Christian values. Um, all my kids are under six, so I usually have to work with the little kids on art. <laughs> and um, when I'm not vlogging and being a mom, unlike Diane over there, I like to sleep. <laughs> no, I like to um, go outdoors and... Um, hike and do lots of things outside, except when it's cold. <laughs> so that's that's me. Janine's teasing me a little bit about burning the candle at both ends, which is which is just fine. All right, let's welcome my production manager and right hand woman, Marlene Griffith. Hey guys, I'm happy to be here again with you this week. I blog at diligentheart.com about family, faith, marriage, kids, homeschooling, a little bit of everything, and I will be pulling in your comments from the event room today. Thanks so much. Marlene makes things run smoothly behind the scenes to make a great experience for you guys and that are watching and then that listen later. Stephanie Harrington is joining us today. Thrilled to have her here with us. Stephanie, you to introduce Hi. yourself? Sure. I'm happy to be here. My name is um, Stephanie, and I blog at HarringtonHarmony.com. Um, I blog about homeschooling and military life for a military family, and I've been married to my husband of 22 years, Brian, um, and uh, three children, um, 22, 19, and 11. So I've been homeschooling a very long time. I started homeschooling with my oldest son uh, when he was diagnosed with ADHD, so I blog a lot about that. And um, I currently homeschool my 11-year-old. I also um, teach art at uh, several different homeschool groups um, in my local area and um, getting very excited about soon teaching art classes for military children. Um, through the Skies Unlimited program. 
which is a supportive program for military families through um, offering activities for their children. And I'm happy to be here today. Wonderful. We're going to glean some great information from you today. Tricia Hodges is joining us again today. Tricia, I want to introduce yourself as well. Hi there. I'm Tricia Hodges and I blog at hodgepodge.me. I have five children from preschool to high school. We've been homeschooling like Stephanie since the beginning. And um, my mom has been teaching us art lessons and it sort of happened on a snowy day when she was snowed in with us and she introduced us to chalk art and since then we've been sharing those tutorials on the blog and we have a a series of art curriculum for all ages that we've developed from, with that and my husband and I are also co-owners at the curriculum choice and habits for a happy home It's great to have you here with us today. When I'm not representing the iHomeschool Network with the iHomeschool Hangouts, you can find me over at thekennedyadventures.com where I blog about being a mom of six, share Catholic homeschooling resources, a little bit of fitness, and just kind of a hodgepodge of kind of what goes on in our daily life. I like to say that I talk about my misadventures in homeschooling. Um, we follow a somewhat classical curriculum, but um, this year it's been kind of an unschooling, an unschooling um, experience for us um, with various things going on. But let's kick this topic off. Um, let's talk first of all about um, why should art be a priority in your homeschool classroom? And there's so many things that we can we can teach. As moms, as, home, as homeschooling families, um, so I'll be the first to admit that art has kind of taken a back seat um, because of our busy schedules. But I'd like to hear from our panelists, you know, why they think that art art is particularly important. I'm going to call on. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, go ahead, James. All right. Um, from you know, from my perspective, I was a pastor for many years, and um, you know, when we when we homeschool, and, and we homeschooled our children all the way from first grade through through high school, um, when, uh, you, you can educate the mind, but I think in a very real sense educates the soul. Um, when you know, when you allow children to uh, learn the arts and and uh, explore uh, art and drawing and the world around them. Uh, it opens their eyes to you know God's creation, God's uh, involvement in in the world, and uh, uh, you know I think uh, it's it's easy to push art to the background, but I think it really is a critical part of of just developing a fully rounded uh, person. So that's my two cents. Excellent. And listen to you, I was just thinking about um, the scripture and somebody. Somebody that's a little bit better versed than I am can probably <laughs> remind me of the actual scripture and verse. But I'm thinking about like um, thinking about what's good, true, and beautiful. Um, you know, I, I like to fill my children's hearts and minds um, with with art. There's so many. There's so many resources and so many great classical artists to study. We'll get into that until in a little bit, but um, you know, creating some beautiful some beautiful pieces um, is great for their self esteem. I mean, it's just there's just so many things. Um, Trisha, what about you? I I like to hear from you about why art should be a priority. Well, I think that yes, that all those basic subjects are highly important, but when you have art, then you have a a balance. I think all of us long for a balance in our days and when you have even just a few minutes after lunch to explore a new medium then that can open up the doors just like James said. Um, you can incorporate art into other subjects as well. Um, geography, history especially. There are just many ways that you can use art and often reach a child in a subject that is possibly struggling just by opening that art door. That's a great take, and I actually had not thought about that in the past either. So I'm I'm glad that that brought, that that came up. Stephanie, what about you? 
Well, I think one thing that's really important about art is um, having that creative outlet. That's what I think of as the creativity part of it. And um, it's not just about producing an art piece that is a product that you're trying to create. It's also a process. And going through that process of creativity can help kids think about things in a different way, make them more creative thinkers for solving problems, and just looking at different ways to view the world and different ways to view different things. Um, I also think another thing about art that is really beautiful is that for kids that are special needs, or just ch all children, um, it, it can be an outlet for them to express their feelings. And sometimes kids won't talk about their problems, and I think of military children, and just um, it's a way for them to express themselves where I think sometimes they'll tend to do it through art in ways that they wouldn't do it through conversation or not being able to express their feelings in words, but being able to produce um, something beautiful and artistic from those feelings. And I think that's important. Excellent. I'm learning so much just from sitting and listening to you guys as I knew that I would with this hangout. I was super excited. Um, we've got we've got a wide range, age range of children um, represented on the panel amongst all of us. and um, the viewers didn't see in the green room. I said I was going to be the foil that uh, you yeah, know the non-artistic mother. I'll be a hundred percent honest that uh, doing crafts and art with my kids uh, would probably rather just pull my hair out. Um, and I farm it out, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but I would love to hear. We're not. I'm not the only unique. We're, this is not unique. I think many of us have kids that are different ages. So I'd love to hear kind of like resources about how you would teach art to different ages at the same time. I'm going to pick on Janine. Um, I know she's got multiple kids and I'm not sure how, I know there's a, there's a bit of an age spread but not huge. So let's start with you first and kind of tell us, tell us and then like so I'll offer up to the viewers and listeners, um, how do you teach art to your kids who are maybe different ages or different levels of development? All right. Yeah, you know, I, it's not so much as how I teach, is um, how I encourage them. So um, my daughter is a her. She's six. She's at a first grade level, and then my daughter is um, my other daughter's three. And we also have um, kids that come and stay with us too that are different ages, um, eight years old to you know. There's some ten year olds that come over sometimes. So we have the same project going for all of them, but we just encourage them differently. So, for example, the younger ones, um, I, I focus more on the process instead of the product. And with the older children, you know, you can kind of challenge them more and be more honest with them. You know, I can tell if my six-year-old is just, you know, she's hurrying or she's not really taking the time to focus and, um, and really try. So I can, I can tell her that. Whereas my younger one, I'll just I'll encourage her and say and say that's great, you know, no matter what it looks like. <laughs> so um, for me, it's that encouragement. And then with the younger children, sometimes I like to stop before um, they're ready to start stop. So that makes them excited; they want to do it again, um, you know, quicker. And then with the older kids, I will push them to finish what they've started and um, work on that perseverance. So. In that way, with me, I, um, I'm not necessarily how I teach, but how I encourage them is different. That's some great pieces of advice. Um, my, my two oldest daughters, um, one is now 19 and the other one is uh, 7, um, they're very similar in personalities and they're both very artistically talented. Um, but it's funny, I, I got tickled listening to you talk about perseverance with them. Oh my gosh, no. My my oldest, um, if we took her anywhere like um places where you go and like paint your own pottery kind of thing, like we have a lot of those in our area. I took her when she was probably about eight. Um, she closed the place down. I had to like basically, you know, she was meticulous, she was going to finish it, it was gonna be perfect and there was no way, no how I was ever going to drag her out of there before she was satisfied with her product, you know. And I was just kind of like, oh, what, a, 
<laughs> what do I do? So she was more concerned about you know the end result rather than rather than the creation. So it's just kind of funny um, to think about a kid that would need you know some egging on to you know let's get this done. Um, James, do you have any resource, or not resources, um, advice or tips for people like teaching teaching different kids, different ages, that kind of thing? Yeah, I um, I don't do it anymore, but I used to teach uh, homeschool art. I, I don't have the time, unfortunately, now. But um, I would often run a class of up to you know eight or nine kids with the age range everywhere from six or seven to sixteen and seventeen. And uh, my, my advice is pretty much the same. Uh, what you know, each each child uh, is going to address the project at his or her own level of skill, and and so what makes the difference is how you uh, work with each one. Uh, but uh, we would all work on pretty much the same projects, and uh, obviously the the younger ones, uh, a lot of them are just in the moment. They're just having fun and uh, they haven't gotten to the point where you know the perfectionism has kicked in and they have to have it all just right they're just enjoying themselves uh, so you know with them you encourage uh, with the ones uh, that are a little insecure I had one student that you know was constantly asking me you know is it okay is it okay and and uh, yeah it, it's okay and uh, you know you have to be really careful how you offer critique particularly with one that's fragile like that uh, but uh, but the main thing is just uh, you know let each child work at their own skill level and uh, you know try to encourage them at that level those are some great tips as well I used to think um, when I only had a couple a couple of children. I used to think that that whole thing with you know wanting acceptance, wanting appro seeking approval um, for the project was like an age-based thing. And now as I'm as I'm getting more of a span of personalities at home, I, you do realize that some kids are yeah they'll they'll hop into art and do their thing and have a blast and, and never really care. Whereas some people are much more likely to, you know, to seek your reassurance, and you're right, you got to be careful about how you do that. Um, Stephanie, do you or Trisha have any input on this topic? Um, I can add something. Uh, if I've had all the ages again, and I and I do sometimes with my homeschool group classes, um, I think I'd probably approach it from, and you probably um, heard of the term coined you know, the on and off the school bus method, kind of, where, um, like the others um, on the panel said that they would do the same projects with all of the children. I would definitely do the same projects with all the children. And I did have some of this um, when my oldest was still homeschooling, but he was in high school. And then I had one that was first grade, and I was trying to teach a very, very wide range of ages. Um, but I'd probably um, know what I wanted to cover, and I would maybe start with um, a book that we all do together, and read the book, um, and then pull out of the book what I wanted to teach the kids to maybe talk about the artist, um, and that's something that you can all do together, and you start out on the little kids' level, and then you do the project, and as the little ones kind of dwindle, and they're pretty much done exploring what you've provided for them, then you can go a little farther with the older kids and you can take the extra time with them. Um, maybe if they want more guidance on their project or if you want to spend more time um, learning about the art appreciation and discussing that with them or perhaps more about the artists or something about art history or something like that with the older children. So that's how I would approach it. Alrighty, thank you. Trisha? And that's what I was going to say is um, we have everybody together. And the thing that really helps me is I plan it after lunch because then, you know, all the lunch dishes are cleared off the table and we have that free span of time ahead. And then the little ones, when they get they're done, they can get down, they can go play, and the older ones can stay and do a little bit more. Also, for me, I like to have that area all prepped and have like the trash can close by and a path to the sink. So when you have the little ones, then you can turn and, and help them and the older ones can keep doing what they're, they want to do. 
So the practical side is what I'm all about. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because I've learned um, since I brought the boys home from preschool and they really do love doing arts and crafts, but I'm not that much of a fan. Um, your, prep your prep work and prep time is huge because if you call them to the table and you're still monkeying around getting all of your supplies and stuff together, oh my gosh, you lose them in a second and they're, they're gone. Forget about it. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> All right. What about, um, let's talk about advice for non-artistic moms um, because uh, I have followed the work of Trisha and Stephanie and I consider them to be very artistic. So I want to hear from from folks, Janine, I don't know, I'm, I may have to pick on you, um, or, or James, I want to hear from folks, um, you know, what do you do like me? I... Um, have I've I have art resource I have an art resource Pinterest board. Um, do I use it? Oh, very rarely. So I would love to hear some advice from my panel people about, um, you know, how do you teach art if you simply just don't have a clue? Everybody's looking at me like I don't know. <laughs> I can't well, go. I'll go. <laughs> you want me to go or James? You want to go? Oh, you can go. I'll, I'll jump okay. in later. Okay, I was going to say that um, you may not think you're artistic, but it's not necessarily about um, drawing or painting or, you know, something that we would would categorize as art. It can be a lot of other things. Um, I think that creating different kinds of food is even artistic. I think it's that creative ability that you're developing. And where some people might not like art, they could just let their children have free reign of the art supplies and um, and or create an invitation to paint with different kinds of uh, materials and just explore and create their own art. Um, also, maybe if you haven't liked art before, you could try to get into it now and use some of those free resources that James has on his site or a Pinterest board and, and experiment with that with yourself and then you can go and teach your child what you have learned. That could be a really fun experience for you and for the kids. Um, but yeah, just like I said before, I don't think it's necessarily what we think as of art. I think it's d developing that creative ability in your children um, to explore new things and to um, develop their focusing skills and also planning, the planning ahead of the creative process is really important um, just for in life. If you look at a lot of successful people, they have very advanced creative abilities and they're, uh, they're able to see things that are aesthetic and, um, and they, they're able to spot that and just um, build on that and they're able to um, dream something and make it a reality and that's what you're doing when you're allowing your kids to explore art and, and creative um, outlets. So that's my take on it. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks Janine. What about you James? Yeah I would uh, I would agree with everything she just said. Um, it's um, you know, when we talk about teaching art at home sometimes we have much too narrow a definition of what uh, what that involves, uh, you know, teaching art at home, or and I really prefer the arts because I think it's more than just drawing and painting. Uh, I think you know I would include music. I would include uh, I know I'm a writer. Uh, I would include include anything that it involves creating something, and um, you know, I believe all of us are creative one way or the other. We may not all you know take a, a brush to canvas or uh, write music, but uh, I think the key in teaching art is helping your child find whatever creative outlet uh, really, you know, gets them going. And, uh, you know, it, it may be, you know, it may be woodworking, building things. You know, I, I tell people I can draw wonderful pictures, but don't ask me to build anything. Uh, don't ask me to fix something around the house. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, creativity is a very broad, uh, broad subject. And I think uh, just encouraging and finding ways to discover their creativity and find out what interests them. And then when you find those interests, 
uh, that's when you begin to focus in on helping them uh, develop and cultivate and uh, really you know polish those. That's absolutely excellent. That's actually something that I had forgotten about. Um, I'm looking at the girls here on the panel with me and I know that we're all pretty darn good writers. So there's, um, <laughs> if I can't draw something, I'm like you, I can write, you know, can't necessarily draw, but right, I think that's a, that's an important piece to remember as, as a homeschooling family is that you're exactly correct, um, creativity doesn't look the same for every, for every person. Um, my daughters that are artistically talented in drawing also have a marvelous eye for photography. Once again, uh uh didn't come from mom. I don't know who I don't know where that came from, but it's not me. I mean I can study photography all I want, but um as far as having a natural eye or natural ability, that just that's something that I just don't have. I can try to hone you know, pick up tips and kinda of hone what little I've got there, but you're right. Um I have boys. Not sure what they're gonna be what what they're create well, yeah, Legos. There you go. Legos. Hey, there you go. Our Lego, all of our Lego moms. <laughs> there's some create. There's some lots of creation going on there. So yeah, just take a look at some different things. I love that idea. Um, Marlene, I think we have something pinned. Um, part of our um, the wonderful thing about our hangouts is encourage. We we seek to encourage homeschool families and homeschool mothers in particular. Um, through our wide and varied levels of experience. So Marlene's got a comment that she wants to bring in from the event panel and I want our moms to kind of take a look at this and see what kind of encouragement we can offer. All right, so Madeline says, I grew up disliking art. I consider it a waste of time, though I'm capable of producing beautiful pieces of art on demand. However, one of my sons enjoys art, and the other one dislikes it very much. I do not conduct art lessons with the boys. I do provide plenty of art materials, including books and videos, where the son who is interested in art uses his free time to explore that area. However, my distaste for art and how much useful time it consumes will probably never disappear. So I'm going to call on um, Tricia to help out with this one. Um, like, how how would you encourage? Madeline is a frequent viewer um, on our on our hangouts. Um, so how would you encourage her in kind of in this realm? Well, um, I was going to say to the other question, and I think this can segue into this, is that my mother is a master artist, but I've always felt like I did not inherit the art gene. However. I have just practiced in teaching. I just spending that five to ten minutes, and like she said, having those resources available is a huge step just to provide those for her sons, and that's what we have found. Um, I think that our job as a parent really isn't to be a master artist; it is to be a master encourager because the Lord has given us each an inbred talent in some form or fashion and when we find that like she has found with her one of her sons then we can provide resources especially for that and um, I think a big part of it is recognizing those those talents in our children and encouraging that I think you're right I think uh, the things that my daughters, my daughters, my sons, anybody, all my kids like to do. Um, one of my daughters loves to ride um, horses. You could not pay me enough money to get on a horse. I'm scared to death of them. But here's this tiny little thing, you know, weighs about 50 pounds, you know, hops up on a horse and off she goes. That's that's her charism. That's her love. I mean, she would rather be at the barn than do anything else. Now, do I like it? Mm -hmm. I don't like horse slobber or horse poo or <laughs> a stinky cold barn in the winter, you know, but that's what she loves and it goes back to, um, you know, pouring into your child's passion. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of things that I'm not that much of a fan of, <laughs> but because my kids love it, you know, I learned to not, not even tolerate it, but like Trisha said, encourage them kind of, you know, where, you know, where their hearts lie. 
So and it's it's good for them. All right. Anybody else um, have off have uh, some advice for Madeline? I do. I can say first off, I think that Madeline um, is on the right track with just providing the resources. So I commend her for that because part of it's just exposing them to the possibilities by by you know offering them the materials or the resources so they can explore it themselves. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that I have two children that are exceptionally good at art and exceptionally interested in art and it came very natural to them. And then I have a science minded child who I homeschool now who has very little interest in it. And so my approach with him has been, you know, I, I don't push it with him. I don't want to um, I don't want him to not look forward to our art classes or, um, you know, get a, you know, have, have him, I don't want him to be turned off by it. Um, and so what I, what I normally do is, um, or what works for me a lot of the times is I just get out and start doing it myself and then he'll come over and if it's something that interests him, then he'll do it and if it's not, then he won't. Um, for a mom that herself doesn't uh, really enjoy art very much, um, you know, the same is true, you know, it's just, it's okay, because sometimes our kids don't like what we like to do, and sometimes we don't, you know, like what our kids like to do. You know, my science-minded child, I'm kind of at a loss. He always wants to talk to me about scientific things that I, you know, how things work, and I have no idea. So my, my best strategy with that is I try to expose him to things that will give him the information that he thrives on based on his interest in science and, and the same thing goes for art too. Um, you know, you may not have all the answers or the love for it that your your child does, but you can give them the resources and seek out people who can influence them and have have good um, and inspiring things for them and also just books, videos, all kinds of things. Excellent. I've got um, another um, sort of, we're talking about people having perfectionist tendencies or encouraging your kids as well. Um, how about um, Marlene? There's a, yeah, that's it from Amy Wishman. Can you bring that in, please? Yeah, definitely. Um, so Amy asks Any suggestions for overcoming perfectionist tendencies in your kids? My daughter gets easily frustrated if something isn't perfect. Now, uh, let me jump in on that one because uh, I, I have a lot of uh, experience with perfectionism uh, because I am one. Um, if uh, if you look behind me, the, the portrait that is back there uh, is of two little boys about eight years old. Um, those boys are in college now. I started that picture when they were eight years old uh, and just finished it yesterday. And the reason it took me ten years to do it uh, I'm not Michelangelo, you know, it didn't, didn't take me uh, just because I was uh, so intricate, it's just uh, I, uh, you know, I have this burning desire to be a portrait artist and, uh, you know, whenever I do a likeness I can get really, really close but it's not quite what I wanted and I got the faces these of my nephews uh, done and I wasn't happy with it and I put piece away and didn't touch it for 10 years. Uh, now I, I mentioned I'm also a writer and, and uh, I work as an editor and a collaborator and uh, also a consultant for, for authors and an author uh, asked me a question. Uh, he wanted me to review a novel that he was uh, working on and uh, he uh, he said I just want to know if I should, and he's, he's like three-fourths of the way done, he, he said I, I want to know if I should just you know finish this or just you know throw it away. And I told him, well, the answer is a no-brainer. You finish the work uh, because you will learn more by finishing it than you will by not finishing it. Even even if it's you know even if it's got problems, you'll learn more by finishing it. And then I remembered I had a painting I started ten years ago that I hadn't finished because I wasn't uh, happy with it. So I realized, you know what? Okay, it's not perfect. Uh, but I'm going to learn more by finishing it than I will by not finishing it. And uh, so if I make a mistake, fine, then I will learn from my mistake and my next one will be better. So, you know, translating that into a child's uh, language, 
you know, it, it's hard because they do, you know, get to a point where they want everything to be, you know, just right. And uh, you know, as best you can, encourage them. You know, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay. Uh, you know, as a writer, I tell myself all the time, it's okay to write, you know, write bad because you got to write bad before you have something to work with to make it good. Uh, so, uh, you know, encourage them, uh, affirm them, and uh, help them to press through and finish. And then if they're not happy, say, okay, let's make the next one better. My two cents. Excellent. Well, I, I read something sort of along those lines, very simplistic, um, about writing. It was like, you know, write, 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 and write some more. Maybe you don't feel like writing. Or you think that your writing's terrible because the more do you think that that's true? The more that you create art, the better you'll get. I definitely, uh, I definitely think uh, the more. Now, uh, you know, again, there there is room for learning and and you know seeing our mistakes and weaknesses and and you know, developing from them. But uh, if if uh, if we stop. Trying just because something isn't perfect, then you know we'll never we'll never improve. Uh, and and part of maturing as an artist, I think, is learning how. I, I know as a writer, learning how to take critique was a very important part. Uh, and likewise in art, uh, you know, you have to learn not only to self-critique but to listen to the critiques of others. But uh, you know, children aren't depending on where they are emotionally and where where they are in their age, aren't always ready to. You know, receive critique. So, so you have to handle that gently, uh, but you know, encourage them to keep developing and uh, keep practicing. Absolutely. Thank you. That's a, a great advice. I'm hoping hoping that we were helpful, because um, um, as Renee is saying, I see that over on the vet page. You know, perfectionism can be can be a problem with homeschoolers because we're um, a lot of us are pretty driven. Our kids are probably pretty driven as well as a result. So that's a, and it's a life lesson. So you know, you have to take take, take into consideration the maturity level and that sort of thing. But it's something that I think we all have to learn at some point. Um, let's talk about. Um, I see. I'm seeing some questions come up in the event room, and I kind of want to segue those into. Um, uh, homeschool moms are always um, very mindful of their budgets. The majority of us don't have um, a giant uh, array of money or time for resources. So I want to talk about um, some some free resources. Like um, like, what are your favorite resources um, that are free or relatively inexpensive? And then we're also going to talk about. I want to talk about um, like materials that you need that you need in your home. Um, which may look a little bit different for everybody, I think. So let's do the first part of that first. Um, Stephanie, I'm going to pick on Stephanie. Um, what about, um, can you share some favorite free resources? And then we'll just move on down the line um, and let people share well, share for our readers. Sure. Um, mostly I use the Internet a lot. I research um, things on the internet for projects and um, lots of freebies and there's some great stuff out there. It does take a little bit of searching but you know we have a wealth of information right there. Um, and so I do a lot of that when I come up with my own lesson plans. Um, and you know Pinterest is great too for just getting ideas. And then sometimes it's enough for me to just build on what I see there. Um, because it inspires me. And so those are the two that I use the most. The library, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely the library. Janine, I heard you mention earlier um, actually some free resources from See the Light. You want to talk a little bit more about that? Well, maybe James should talk about that since he. <laughs> How about how do you how about how do you use them in your how do how you do use, use them at your house? Yeah, <laughs> I love the little tips that he has. He has um, a bunch of videos, video tips, just really quick videos that will show you um, how to improve your drawing skills. So I really like that. And um, a few other blogs that I like to follow. One is called Archu, like 
um, A-R-T-C-H-O-O dot com. And her newsletter is amazing. Would you mind if I shared that on screen share? Okay. I have it up right here. Um, here's her newsletter. And she has some great ideas from her blog that she does. So um, these first ones are all her ideas. And then she features some from Pinterest, some um, art ideas from Pinterest that she finds. And then, this is my favorite part, cool stuff to show your kids. And she features this ama these amazing artists who create just um, spectacular art that you might not um, think of. And this man, he experiments with paint dropping and photography and he photographs these um, amazing um, just, just these amazing photos of paint drips and paint exploding and all these different things and for that mom who has a son that doesn't like art he might be interested in just watching all the different um, you know kinds of art there are out there it's amazing so this newsletter is amazing from Archu and then one other blog that I like to follow is artprojectsforkids.org and she has a lot of really fun crafts and drawing and all of that so um, that's that's what I like to use for my free resources awesome um. I think I've actually seen that. I recognize like the little dinosaur logo. <laughs> so I think I have seen some of that before. Um, let me, I'm going to pick on Trisha for just a second and then I'm going to get back over to James. Uh, I know that I have seen some tutorials uh, on YouTube, I believe, um, from Nana. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, uh, I haven't counted lately, but I think we have about 75 free art tutorials at HodgePodge. And then we, we have recently started a, a YouTube channel, too, with some of those video tutorials. Um, we also like to use um, Sketch Tuesday by Harmony Art Mom. Each week she puts up a topic, and one day a week we, after lunch we like to um, put on our Harmony Fine Art Studies and listen to our composer and, and find out what the sketch topic is, and, and we do that. So that's another free resource at harmonyfinearts.org. All right. James, what about, uh, we'll, see the, we'll see the light. I think Janine was telling right. me, yeah, the tutorial or the quick tips. Yeah, we've got a number of free things on our website. Um, we have, uh, from our art class, we have three actually complete lessons, about 15 to 20 minutes, uh, that uh, will give you a, it's kind of a sampler to give you an idea of, of how those lessons work. But then there's also a section of the website that is just, uh, you know, quick tips. And there, are, uh, all of those tips are taken from uh, uh, the art class or art projects series. So, so they're just little, uh, you know, mini clips. And then I blog twice a week uh, on that uh, on the See the Light site. And uh, my blog is sort of a combination. I do some of my own tutorials. Uh, and uh, then I also, uh, I, give my, I have to give my wife credit here, she's my research assistant extraordinaire, but uh, she goes through the web and uh, will generally pick a, a topic or two and uh, she will find and track down free resources uh, across uh, the internet uh, to, uh, and then we'll plug those in and just give links to these various uh, websites uh, you know, as, as blog posts. So. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of good free stuff there, and I uh, hope that people will check it out. Excellent. For those of you that are um, listening later, you can go to the event page, and we're going to have some of those links shared over there. Um, if you're over in Google Plus now, you can take a look. I think we've got some stuff there, but um, just kind of come back to the event page. So we'll have some of those links shared there for you. Um, kind of segueing off of that, the resources. I've had a couple of moms. Um, Marlene, you want to bring one of those comments in? People are asking about what type, um, what type of materials? Like, do we go more expensive? Um, how do you how do you do that? Yeah, um, Renee was commenting to a question that Jimmy Landley had asked about buying fancy supplies or cheap supplies. Does it really matter? And Renee Brown was saying that her son uses scrap paper to draw on, but it's very but he's is very particular about his mediums. Uh, 
I'm looking at Trisha because I know that she uh, she is a big proponent of using using quality material. Am I am I not right? Well, actually, we um, use copy paper a lot, <laughs> and uh, just because it's readily available, and often I have to go and fix the printer so because somebody's been pulling copy or paper out to to draw, but. Um, we start basic like that. We use copy paper and one set of chalk pastels or one set of acrylics for the whole family. And then if we find that somebody is really particularly interested in a certain medium, then it, you know it might be time to get that for somebody's birthday or for Christmas. We also, um, Nana gave us an art box for Christmas and it was just full of the things that we might need and so it was all in one spot and we keep it close to the table. There's construction paper. She did get us some uh, acrylic paper, um, things that we can just explore with. So I would say start within your budget and and just get started. That's the biggest thing I think and then go from there, explore. There are coupons at craft stores. Um, you, can, you can stay on top of it and really enjoy what you do. I'm glad that you brought that up because I um, tend to go overboard uh, <laughs> every back to school <laughs> season with loads and loads of um, coloring crayons, coloring pencils, um, all kinds of like that. I buy them back to school season because they're cheaper, obviously. If you, like Trisha mentioned, if you sign up for um, Michael's and Joann's, and I'm Pretty sure Joann's gives um, homeschool discounts. I'm not sure if Michael's does or not. I can't remember. But they'll have like a 40% off coupon. Oh, yeah, you can go pick up your your chalk pastel box. You know, with that, um, I don't. I, I rarely make it to Michael's because I don't want to take <laughs> the whole crew in because <laughs> that would be disastrous. But if you can stop by, you know, stop by, pick it up, and and head on out the door, and just kind of just slowly build your stash. Um, Janine says she's got a she's got a resource for materials. What what do you think? Um, on my blog, trueaimeducation.com, there is in the sidebar a button. It says the ultimate guide to 50 uh, arts and crafts materials. And so, if you have some craft things or art supplies in your house and you have no idea what to do with them, just go on and click there, and it will lead you to. Um, art projects and how to use all these different kinds of materials. There's googly eyes on there, feathers, just anything you can think of, you know, to do art. So if you have those things just lying around or maybe you stop by a garage sale and you see some art supplies and you want to know what to do with them, that's a really good resource right there to go to. So. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that with us. Oh, I just wanted to add that I also have like a list. Um, like, if you're not sure, like, if you want to try something different, you know, what is out there? I also have a list that um, is in the pictures in the files on the event page, also for must-haves, and they're my favorite mediums that I use. Of course, I have them all, but I don't advocate going out and buying them all at once. Just you know, pick something that looks interesting, or let your kids choose. A medium and start with one and that that way it's not too expensive you know and, and if you use those 40% coupons it's not so bad so I think maybe starting with one and then slowly building um, your art supply is the best way to go for that I'm going to bring in a comment from my friend Steph Layton um, art supplies make great birthday and Christmas gifts in our house so don't forget that um, we I will always always um, put it on my um, wish list. My mom will frequently grab um, lots of stuff for us, um, sketch pads and whatnot, all the time for Christmas gifts. Because that's a, those are to, in our house. Those are consumables. I mean, they're all they're they are going to get used no matter what. They're not they're not going to sit in a in a cabinet and gather dust. <laughs> So um, that's the kind of stuff that I that actually I love to get in my home. But let me um, we're going to be wrapping up here in just a minute. But I want to um, ask uh, since I'm uh, surrounded by some pros here, um, as a non-artistic mom, um, how do you know if your child has a special gift for art? 
and what do you do? What do you do with it? What do you What do you do about it? Jay, look at Jay was laughing. How about How about you tackle that one for us? Okay, uh, well, I, I do a whole workshop called, called Guide to Creative Child, and, and it, it's always interesting to uh, you know to see how parents react when we when we discuss the the question of uh, you know how you know you have a creative child and uh, I don't I don't uh, have the time to do all of that here but uh, what you know essentially if you have a child who is uh, you know expressing a, a strong interest in uh, you know drawing painting creating whatever and they you know they seem to live to do that you you know you, you find them doodling when they're supposed to be doing actual schoolwork or uh, whatever uh, you know what to, to me the you know the number one word is encouragement uh, you, you you know you identify you know what they're interested in doing and then as much as possible uh, help them develop that skill and and you know, it may come to a point uh, and in fact likely will that you know you may eventually have to outsource uh, there's a lot of good resources online uh, for you know teaching art but uh, eventually you know you may have to find somebody who can who can help them take it to the next level but uh, you know when you see that creative drive when you see somebody who you know, can't stop drawing can't stop painting uh, or, or or whatever can't stop writing poetry or or uh, creating uh, you know, you want to do whatever you can to to encourage and develop that, and and it's uh, it's usually pretty obvious uh, that uh, you know, you've got somebody here who, uh, like I said, you know, colors outside the lines. Uh, they you know they don't fit into the traditional academic approach, uh, and uh, uh, that's when you know you've got somebody that. Uh, really work with them, and uh, I will be posting on. Uh, our blog tomorrow will link to my workshop guiding the creative child so uh, you know watch for that go over to the the site and I'll have more details uh, on on how you actually do that thank you so much um, this has been a wonderful hangout I'm sending messages to the panelists saying gosh we could sit and talk about this all day long um, it is such a wonderful topic and it's one that we all enjoy and I love to be able to listen um, to my friends, new and old, um, to learn and to glean information from you all. And I hope that this has been very helpful um, to our viewers and then to our listeners that will be, that'll be checking us out a little bit later. Um, I want to, for our re readers that missed, may have missed it in the beginning, uh, we have a special guest here today, James Pence from seethelightshine.com. See the light encourages children to draw and create their own masterpieces. He has such a re giant resource um, from little kids all the way up through high school uh, with art lessons on DVD, DVD art project courses, as well as lessons that revolve around Bible stories. So you want to circle him on Google+. Plus. Um, see the light also has a Google Plus page, so I'd encourage you to circle both um, James and the See the Light page, and then check the check him out at seethelightshine.com. You can see his stuff right there at, at the bottom. Now I want to thank you for taking your time out this afternoon and being here with us today. Also want to welcome and thank Janine for being here from TrueAimEducation.com. She took time out of her busy day with a new baby to come and hang out with us. My production manager, Marlene Griffith, as always, at adiligentheart.com. Stephanie Harrington is at harringtonharmonies.com. And, uh, yeah, she's got, don't, uh, don't let her fool you, she's uh, artistically talented in numerous ways, um, art and music, so be sure to check her out. And my friend, Trisha Hodges, from hodgepodge.me. And I'm Diana Kennedy from thekennedyadventures.com. Um, if you will go and circle us, circle us meaning IHN, and all of these wonderful panelists um, on Google+, I know that they, uh, we have lots to share over there, you can follow us on iTunes or on Stitcher. And if you are enjoying us on the podcast, please make sure that you leave us a review because it bumps us up in the ratings and makes us available to more people. 
um, where people see us. Um, I spotted us in the new and noteworthy, new and noteworthy section um, a few weeks ago, and I was very excited. Um, we're also on YouTube, and you can check out our landing page at ihomeschoolnetwork.com slash hangouts. You'll find us here every two, every Thursday, I'm sorry, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain Time, and 11 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. Um, I think next week's topic is homeschool conventions. I should have had, <laughs> should have had my cheat sheet in front of me. Um, but you'll find us talking about all kinds of stuff, um, homeschooling and family related. And we have a great time chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for spending our, your afternoon with us today. I hope this was very helpful to you guys, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.